DIY Brass Guy here, and I'm going to show you how to mix and EQ a brass ensemble. We'll focus on the brass quintet, but the same principles will apply to a larger brass groups as well. If you play any brass instrument, you may find yourself standing in front of a mixing board on a gig at some point. So I'll give you some guidelines to make the band sound good in a live setting. And also, when y'all decide to record an album, you'll be the producer, so it'll help for you to communicate with the engineer and get the exact sound that you want. You work so hard to develop a beautiful sound and to put a great musical program together. It would be tragic for poor audio production to spoil your efforts. Bonus, I'll also show you a stage plot and input list that you can use yourself, or if you have a gig where they're providing the PA, then you can send it to the audio production company before the concert so they know your preferred setup. We'll look at some options on an analog mixer and then also a digital audio workstation, which you could find yourself standing in front of at some point in a live concert or at a studio recording session. I'll be using examples from My Brass Quintet, the Top 40 Brass, which you can hear some of our recordings on my Fun Brass Stuff playlist. Email me if you're interested in getting a hold of any of the arrangements. I write them all myself. Now let's dive in. So panning is organizing the instruments left to right, and you want what the listener hears to match what the listener sees. So pan the ensemble just like they're set up on stage. Here's a typical stage plot for Brass Quintet. So this is how we'll lay out the panning. The tuba will be in the center, trumpets on the outside, horn and trombone in the middle. This way, the instruments aren't all stacked right in the middle, which creates more independence for each of them, so the individual clarity comes through. Now regarding effects. The only effects I use are reverb and compression when dealing with brass instruments. Reverb gives some reflections of the sound depending on the size and shape of the room. The more reverb you add, the larger and more empty the room sounds. Adding reverb warms up the sound so it isn't quite so dry, but you don't want to overuse it or things get muddy and unclear. Most DAWs have a preset option for you, and they're often labeled things like large room or cathedral or church or stadium, things like that, and those are great starting points. Here's what I use. I start with some presets that I made myself you can start with some of the presets that your DAW provides. You can definitely adjust these as needed to your preference, but the presets give you a good starting point. On an analog board, you won't likely have as much individual control, and in a live setting, you won't need very much, but still add a little if it's available, especially if you're performing outdoors. Compression is the process of reducing the dynamic range between the loudest and the softest part of a signal. This is done by boosting the quieter notes and bringing down the louder notes. So basically, a compressor evens out the overall volume of an instrument's signal. It can prevent audio spiking, like a high trumpet accent that would normally peak and distort, by having some compression on the channel. You don't want to overuse it because it does hinder the dynamic range that you've worked hard to create artistically. Plus, it can really muffle your beautiful tone if you use too much. So just like the reverb, the, the DAW has presets for compression that can make a good starting point and you can adjust as needed. Here are the settings that I use. On an analog board, you'll want to add compression if it's available. It doesn't have to be the same amount on each instrument, not quite like reverb needs to be. You can have more on trumpet one than you do on French horn, for example. EQ is shaping the tone of the instrument. Uh, deciding which frequencies to bring out and which ones to fade down. Now just keep in mind that frequencies are just pitches, and the EQ will help clarify the registers that you indicate for each instrument. If panning is organizing the instrument left to right, then EQ is organizing the, in the instrument top to bottom. Mixing an instrument by itself is different from mixing the instrument in the context of a group. So I consider the characteristic range of each instrument when setting their EQ levels. Um, so if you look here on the staff, the trumpet one plays mostly upper and above the staff, trumpet two a little lower in the middle of the staff, French horn in the lower treble staff and a bit below, trombone just lower than the horn, mid upper bass clef, and then tuba lower bass clef and below. I know that not every piece is arranged like this, but the general approach to instrument range relative to EQ works well for mixing. In a DAW, there's a spectrum analyzer that shows the frequencies that are sounding. It's a great visualization of each instrument. Let's take a quick listen to this trumpet excerpt 
with zero EQ adjustments, or flat. Now let's see if we can make it better by making a few basic changes. So trumpet one. See its shape primarily in this range? That's the range we want to emphasize to capture the characteristic tone of the instrument. So we have two ways of doing this, adding or subtracting volume. We can increase the gain in this range and or we can decrease the volume of other range areas. I always start with subtracting because the instrument already isn't using those frequencies. And when you add gain, you have to watch out for level peaking. This EQ is going to be in addition to any volume adjustments you make on the, on the audio files or channels themselves, so be careful adding to it. Notice how the characteristic tone is more clear and defined, and there is less peripheral noise because we've cut down those frequencies. Now let's go through the other four instruments and make the appropriate changes. We'll move quickly. I don't have a custom preset for French horn, but I start with the trumpet too and slide everything over a little to bring out the frequencies that will really resonate with the French horn. For the trombone, I do have a custom preset that I use, and for bass trombone and tuba, I take that trombone preset and again bring out the frequencies that are characteristic to the tone of the tuba. Let's do one more comparison of an excerpt with no effects to one with effects. We'll use trombone this time. If you're dealing with an analog board, it will probably have EQ knobs labeled high, mid, low, rather than a spectrum analyzer. So you'll want to recreate the EQ settings from the DAW manually. Here's a board setup for a brass quintet. As you can see, these are my EQ options, and I've tried to recreate what we did in the DAW in a general way here, differentiating between each of the five parts we've got. So let's give the entire excerpt a listen totally flat without any adjustments being made. Now let's make our adjustments using EQ, panning, reverb, compression, and see what kind of difference it makes. Notice how each instrument has a little more separation from the others. Their characteristic tone is more clear and defined. We've basically trimmed the fat around each instrument's sound, omitting less important frequencies, which creates clarity in the appropriate significant registers. If you're making an entire album, be sure to make a template for panning EQ effects so each track is consistent. I hope this gives some insights into mixing a brass quintet effectively so that when you need it, you've got the settings that you'll need and an understanding of the mixing board. If you're going to purchase your own equipment, I've got some recommendations in the description. Check it out. Best of luck to you, fellow brass brothers and sisters. I'm DIY Brass Guy, and remember, everyone can make great music.